While GPU prices seem to be on their way back down out of the stratosphere, many of us still can't afford a new card or would rather just extend the life of their existing cards, whether it's your own or one that you've just picked up, uh, you know, second hand. Giving it a good clean is a great way to keep its performance basically like new. Now, personally, I have an RX 480 that's both a little on the older side and has been in fairly constant use for a fair while. So I think it's time to, well, get it cleaned out and replace both the thermal paste and thermal pads. Now, to do that, the first thing you need to make sure is that you have a, a clean workspace, and ideally you'll be, uh, well, grounded with an anti-static strap to protect your card from, well, getting fried while it's opened up. You'll also need uh, some of the smaller Phillips head screwdriver bits, some isopropyl alcohol and wipes, replacement thermal pads, which are the right thickness, in my case that was one millimeter, and of course, replacement thermal paste as well, and about an hour or so, give or take. When it comes to dismantling the card, on the back, you'll often find two sort of sizes of screws, uh, and often the ones that the smaller set that are around the GPU die itself will have their own little back plate or, or brace like this one. Uh, and then you'll often have a, a larger selection of often physically larger screws that hold the heatsink to the PCB itself. In the RX 480's case, you also have three small screws on the sides of the card that hold the cooler sort of plastic shroud on, and a couple of screws on the rear I.O. Uh, panel that you want to remove as well. And then once all of those are out, you can then carefully pry, well, pretty much everything apart. Taking a look at the GPU die itself, you can see just how dried and crusty the stock paste was. I mean, it's just literally flaking off, it's that dry, and the paste on the cooler really isn't any better. The card itself isn't all that dusty. I mean, the fan could do that a little cleaning, but the card itself isn't, you know, blocked full of grotty old dust and hairs, so that's definitely a, a good sight. Peeling the VRM cooling plate off reveals the dried and cracked thermal pastes or thermal pads too, some of which were rather haphazardly thrown on from the factory or seem to have even been torn from factory too. As for the cleaning, the thermal paste is something that you want to crack out the isopropyl alcohol for to gently clean both off of the heatsink itself and much more gently from the, the GPU die. You want this as clean as you can get it, specifically without scratching or damaging either of those surfaces. This might take a little while, but your patience will be rewarded later, so take your time, make sure that it's thoroughly cleaned, but in, you know, left in good condition at the end. Then you can tackle the thermal pads, which can be carefully removed. It's a good idea to use that isopropyl to clean off the, the tops of the, the VRAM and VRMs and the cooling plate as well. Once everything is nice and clean, you can get your new thermal pads ready. Unless you've bought a kit for your specific card, you will likely have a, a large pad, kind of like this uh, Arctic APT uh, 2012 or the 2560 pads that I have here. You'll need to make sure that you both cut it to the right size and use the right thickness or the same thickness as the original pads. In this case, the original pads were one millimeter thick, so I'll be using this one millimeter pad material. Then you can basically just sort of eyeball how much material you need based on the existing pieces if you can, or if you can't, they're not in good enough condition to use as a reference, then you can just base the size on either the cooling plates or just what components are gonna be cooled by them. Once they're all cut to size, you should do your best to try not contaminate these as you install them, although I appreciate that that can be a, a tricky task for sure. I also cut a few pads a, a little too large, so I just trimmed them down after seating them on the cooling plates. Then I put the cooling plate back on the PCB and started installing some of the screws. 
make sure when you're adding those screws to apply them with even pressure in a star pattern to help compress those thermal pads evenly into, well, stay in one piece. It's a good idea to just gently put them all in and then come back and tighten them later. Next comes the new thermal paste. Now, well, you can do this like the factory did, just dump a daub on and, you know, stick the cooler on and hope that it spreads itself out evenly. Personally, I prefer to apply enough paste and then use a plastic spreader to even out the paste so that every part of the dye is evenly coated. That way, when the heatsink drops back down onto the die, it'll have a nice even layer of thermal paste beneath it, rather than having to spread it out and potentially, you know, oozing it out of the sides or just missing parts of the die. Once the thermal paste is on and spread out, you can then stick the heatsink back on. It's pretty common to find that the screws on the back plates uh, for the, the die itself or the heatsink have little springs on them. Of course, make sure that those are nicely seated. And then again, you'll want to uh, tighten those screws like you do a CPU cooler in a cross pattern to apply even pressure. Before putting everything back together, don't forget to clean out things like the fan and any dust or debris that is in the heatsink or anywhere else in the card. Then you can reassemble everything and well, tighten everything down evenly. Now, to see if my repaste was actually a success, I ran Furmark before and after my uh, sort of repasting job, and I got some interesting results. Now, the average FPS was the same, about 64 FPS for both times, and at first glance, the temperatures were actually slightly higher on the repasted card, which doesn't sound like good news. But happily, digging a little deeper shows the cause. The fan was running about 200 RPM slower, the GPU die was uh, drawing about a watt uh, less power, and more importantly, the GPU clock was running about 50 megahertz higher, so it's running more efficiently, which is not bad. Considering the only real offense the card committed here was some crusty thermal paste, I'm pleasantly surprised by the even slight improvements. I can only imagine what some of the uh, the nastier, grottier cards that are definitely out there would be like sort of before and after. So it's certainly something that I would recommend, especially on older or dirtier cards. It is worth noting though that if your card is still under warranty, many makers, including AMD themselves here, still use these warranty void if removed stickers, which as far as I'm aware are illegal, at least in the States anyway. So it is worth keeping that in mind if it is still within its warranty period. Although actually, if your card needs cleaning within a year or two of it being new, then I think you might have some massive other problems. But that's a look at how to repaste and repad a GPU. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Also, if you've done this before, if you've repasted your GPU uh, and seen some performance improvements, I'd love to hear about it in the comments as well. Uh, also, if you want to see more videos from me, whether that's full reviews, whether that's comparisons, guys like this, or the DIY Smart Home series, anything and everything, do hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon if you haven't already. Feel free to check out some more videos in the end cards when they pop up in a second. And feel free to check out the links in the description. Uh, there will be some links to both the thermal pads and paste that I've used uh, in the description if you're interested. Those are global Amazon affiliate links. There's also links to places like Overclock UK if you're buying from there. You can support me and my ramblings directly through YouTube, through the YouTube join button and become a, a YouTube member, or you can become a patron instead. Both have some cool rewards for doing so. You can also pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or a load of other designs, and yeah, that's kind of it really. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it useful and informative, feel free to let me know in the comments down below as well. And yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.